It's beer o'clock on Real L Craft Beer. I'm joined by Simon. How are you doing, Simon? We hey, good to see you again. Love. I'd love to shake your hand, but we're not allowed in these current times. Um, Simon, um, we are at your pub, The Cricketers. Beautiful. I, I love this place. I really do. It's got a really nice, warm feel into it. It's one of the great mm. pubs in Cardiff, recognised by many from all over the world as being a great, safe place to come to. And in these troubled times, that's a great accolade. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that's what we're going to talk about today. These, these, um, the industry we're in and, and where the industry is moving forward and, and, and the current trends. I think, I think that one of the great things that we have to always remember about the drinks industry is that it's extremely resilient. Mm. It's been going for years and years and not only that, the most important thing of all is that through great wars, world wars and even uh, civil unrest, pubs have always remained open. Yeah. Until COVID-19. Yes, yes. And yes. for the first time in the history of Welsh brewing and Welsh pub keeping, you know, we've actually faced for the very first time a total closure. Yeah. And not because of anything that we have done. Mm. How has the industry as a whole coped with that? Well, it's been a disaster. Mm. You know, there is nothing, there's no easier way to describe it than a complete disaster. Everybody has lost their revenues, they've lost their market position. Yeah. But worse still is the fact that the consumer has been terrified by a combination of the press, government, ministers making um, unhelpful and at times misplaced remarks. Yeah. And, and the worst thing of all, Simon, is this, is that the morale of our industry has been shot. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really has. It really has. Um, I speak to brewers up and down the country on a on a weekly basis, and um, exactly that morale. Morale is such. Um, you need confidence in this game, don't you? Because because your investment comes first. You you you, you know the, the grain and the hops and the, uh, you need to be able to know at the end of the day that you well, can sell your beer. Well, always remember this: on the Tuesday before lockdown, Mark Drakeford, our gallant leader, told the whole of Wales. There will be no lockdown in Wales. Right. Five o'clock on that Friday, yeah. we will lock down for 14 weeks. Yeah. And for brewers like ourselves, we, we were just lining up for Easter our contracts for this beer, Buffalo, with J.D. Weatherspoon. Yeah. The cellars were full. We tipped away 504 firkins of beer, £64,000 worth yeah. of car scale. And small companies can't afford it. No. Now, Okay, so we got a marginal amount of compensation from the government, but what it did was it actually made you ask the question, why am I doing this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, why am I doing this? And, and, and then great strength now, because we're here now in November, um, that you, you, we're hopefully towards, towards the end of it with talk of a vaccine. So hopefully we can all get through the other end together. But the problem is, is we're still six months away from that. There's no certainty. And if you listen to the scientists, the scientists will tell you that there is a, a great opportunity for the vaccines to work. But they can't say with any degree of certainty that they will. Yeah. They haven't completed their trials. But that's, that is something for us to look forward to. But the real issue for us as an industry is how many people will be coming out to the end of that tunnel. Yeah. How many brewers, how many publicans, how many consumers will have got out of the habit of going to the pub and will want to come back? This is this is the thing and and, and it, I want to I, I, that's a really good question but I, I want to ask one question before that and is 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 there been a togetherness with with the industry with with brewers or is it being um, more of a you know, I'm going to make my own decisions and go down this path. Has there been a real, like, support think, network? Well, there hasn't been a support network, but what there has been is, um, there has been, in the peripheries, the Welsh Government Drinks Cluster, which has been able to provide information. But remember this, you know, when the pubs were due to reopen in, in, at the end of July, three days before they were due to open, i.e. the Friday before they were due to open on the Monday, we had no direction from government. Yeah. We didn't understand what we were opening into. What were the restrictions? How could we deal with it? And, and the reality remains throughout all this that if there is one lesson that we need to learn, it is this. Government, on, or, and particularly in a devolved government state, needs to be in conversations with the industry. Yeah, absolutely. But not just through their 
bag carriers, etc. But actually understand the intricacies of how the industry works. Because I'm afraid to say, the day we opened, the day we reopened, yeah. Vaughan Gethin announced that he was considering bringing in a smoking ban for pub gardens. Oh, it's almost like a, 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 a from what I can see, a, a sustained attack on this great old industry. Let's not forget this industry has been around for thousands of years. But, but, but don't lose sight of the fact that Mark Drakeford, when asked by a BBC journalist, you know, what about the pubs? When are the pubs going to reopen, First Minister? He just looked him straight in the eyes and he said, there is more to Wales than pubs. Yeah, Let us well, not forget, yeah. 140,000 people are employed in hospitality, yeah, not 7,000 like yeah. Port Talbot, Tata Steel, yeah. where there's a major, major political crisis the yeah. moment anything is said. Yeah. There is a strong consensus within the industry that by February next year, compared to February uh, 20, that we will have seen a decline in employment in the industry. Yeah of somewhere in the region of 30%. That's 30,000 mm. jobs, That's of which, of those 30,000, 40% are below the age of 25. What's the um, mentality with the 10 p.m. closure? Because th this talk now, of once we come out, or once England comes back out of this lockdown, it'll be a 10 o'clock closure again. What's the mentality? Are people getting their coats at half nine? You know, what, what's... Well, I, I think that most licensees call last orders just before 10 o'clock. Right, okay, yeah. Um, assume a 20 minute drinking up period, but then you're out by 20 past. Yeah. I think the argument the government is using is that it's to prevent um, people at the end of an evening becoming overly close to one another. Mm. I, I always thought the purpose of going out for a drink was that you... Uh, enjoyed the bonhomie of your, your friends yeah. and, and your female company and that at the end of the evening, you know, that was it. But look, if that is the only restriction we have to put up with, Simon, then let's put up with it because that yeah. is the least of the restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. The ones like only four to a table that uh, you, can't, you can't socially mix. I mean, those are the issues. And let's face it, every time they bring in these, these bans, they are opening the door to allow people to party at home. They may not be allowed yeah. to legally, but the reality is they haven't got enough police to stop it. And, and, and people like Jamie here, the manager of this place, um, he's the kind of the guardian of the place. So when you're at home drinking, there's no stopping. There's no, you know, you could open up another beer or another bottle of Smirnoff or whatever. I think we've seen no that million. once or twice on your show, Simon. Exactly, 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 exactly. But with Jamie, as, as, a, as a manager, and managers all over the country, they, they've got the ability to say, you've had enough. And that's, that's the difference, isn't it? Well, I think that's one of the differences, but the other things that go in tandem with it, which are vitally important, to be candid, is that we've created safe environments, mm. and we've created environments in which people can feel f safe, they can feel relaxed, but I think, importantly, they can also feel that there is not going to be an abuse of their safety in a pub. So in other words, the rules are applied, and if you don't like the rules, then, you know, it's a one-way street. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, I was going to ask about the, the your, your, your company, your history. I just want to touch on this for a moment, because um, Simon Buckley, um, 250, 251? 200, no, 253, please, Simon. 253 Those years. Those last two are very important. Yeah, 253 years of, of family brewing. How, if you see, I mean, is your family over the 250 years, is there any, you must have record books, has there been anything like this in, 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 the, in the past? Well, remember that we, you know, we've been brewing before the Americans signed the Declaration of Independence, mm. so... American Civil War, the South African Wars, the Great War, the Second World War, and of course many brewers like our, us, you know, have a roll call of people who have served their king and country and have fallen in foreign fields. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, all I will say is that the pandemic has done something that no world wars could do. Mm. And that is simply, we have been closed down. Nothing we've done. And, and here's the point, one point I really want to labour, and that is this. We have all in the industry taken pay cuts, 
uh, staff who've been laid off on furlough have taken pay cuts. They've missed training opportunities and all the rest of it. But the civil servants who drive our country, yeah. they haven't taken a drop in pay. They no. haven't taken a pound reduction. And at the end of the day, they are still there telling government what they should be doing. And none of them, with one or two exceptions, or perhaps none of them, have mm. any practical experience of running our industry. Absolutely not. No, 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 you're totally right. You're totally right. And it, it must... People must be at the end of their tether now. I think you'll find that morale in the industry is rock bottom. Mm. You know, we were told there wouldn't be another lockdown, then there was a second lockdown. But don't let's forget that before that lockdown started, there'd been three weeks of lockdown in Cardiff. Yeah. So companies like ourselves from West Wales, who rely upon the uh, success of our East Wales market, were suddenly in a position where we lost our trade overnight. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And then we were just about to start supplying J.D. Weatherspoons nationally again yeah. in, 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 in November with Christmas beer and, and, and our buffalo. Delivery due to go out on Tuesday and then eight weeks of deliveries. Locked out. Locked out, completely locked out. How has, um, how quick feated have you uh, had to be in terms of, in terms of, you must have thought, right, okay, people are drinking at home now. Um, have, you, have you had to move fast in, 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 in the take-home we, market? We've always, we've always been in the take-home market, but we probably haven't been until this year as quick and fast of foot as we should have been. Uh, now we have an excellent website, one of the best brewing websites in the country. We have a fantastic following. I'll link that below in the description box. It's evanevans.com. It's Evan Evans Brewery. EvanEvansBrewery.com. I'll link that in the description below, or, or, or put it into your web browser and have a little look. And 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 what we've done is we've we've certainly uh, improved our range of beers. We're in the marketplace. We're competitively priced. We deliver to your door. So every day you can have a little bit of Welsh brewing in your home yeah. for for that beer that perhaps you can't take in a pub. But it's always important to remember that there are a lot of small brewers out there, Welsh small brewers, who don't have the ready access to that marketplace because they don't have sufficient funds to be able to develop the, the costly online businesses that we have done. So come February, and we'll be inviting you to come and review some of the beers with us, we are going to be taking on other brewers' beers, and we're going to be marketing them not just here in the UK, yeah. but across Europe. And whilst there'll be one or two who will resist because it's Evan Evans doing it, yeah. there are an enormous number who, who, who want to join in. And the benefit of that is that there are beer shops across Europe who want to buy beer from Wales. But what they don't want mm. is 140 cases of the same beer. What yeah. they want is a layer of 10 or 15 um, beers from different brewers. Yeah, and absolutely. that's what we're going to do. Um, and the other thing to say is, of course, is that we ship our beer all around Northern Europe. There is, there is, our beers are in Sweden, Finland, shortly to be Norway. Then we also have um, Italy and, and moving closer to home, um, France and, and indeed Spain. That, that is a fantastic, fantastic um, spread uh, to be able to get it, your beer. It is. I mean, and it's growing year on year. And, and, and I will take my hat off to Mark Hughes of Welsh Government. Um, he is one of the uh, stars in, 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 the, in, in the rising there. He is on top of it and is very keen to support Welsh brewing. But you have to have a certain amount of resource to be able to do it. Mm. It's very, cost of, um, very costly. It is, uh, in terms of cash, it ties your cash up for 120 days, yeah. if not more. But the great thing is, Evan Evans, you know, 253 years of family brewing further on, we are still flying the flag for Wales. That leads me to my next question, and that is, um, will there be opportunity going forward for a great company like yourself to, I mean, I, 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 I predict that um, a lot of people will probably, and this is very, very unfortunate, like you said, this, it, the industry is going to change, it might have changed for forever, but is there an opportunity to, like pubs will close their doors up and down the country, is there an opportunity for Evan Evans to, to 
grow their, their estate of pubs after, well, after this whole situation is being flashed out? Our strategy is to, it, next year, once we've got back onto a stable footing, um, is to uh, make further acquisitions, buy more pubs. Um, and what we want to try and do is roll out a cricketer-style food-led pub mm -hmm. to different areas of South and, 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 and Mid Wales. But it takes time, it takes yeah. a lot of cash, and most importantly of all, it takes finding the right managers. But what we're beginning to see is, is really good, talented people coming to us looking for jobs yeah. and potential. But we've got a lot of homegrown talent as well. And you know we are the first brewery in Wales to have um, four uh, apprentices. Uh, we are in the process of developing that side of our business so that we will have a new canning line next year and other developments that go with it. But, but the most important thing is we're trying to grow an indigenous Welsh business, yeah. a business that employs people here in Wales, that produces world-class products and provides world-class environments in which people can enjoy themselves. Fantastic, fantastic. It's really good. That, 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 that canned... Um, comment really pricked my ears up because um, I've seen a massive interest and, and development with it's almost like the the supermarkets are the standard squabble over over who gets this three pound to three pound fifty can craft market if you, if you like so Tesco were the first um, two years ago they, they, they dipped their toes in the water they brought a few can craft beers out and then they Next thing, within a year, they had a whole wall of these these, these craft can can beers. Morrison's this year have really kind of attacked Tesco with their own line of, of beers. They both set up massive social media um, profiles. Morrison's being Mozza beers and Tesco being Domo beers, and they've got a huge interest in that. Is that something with the cans that you'll be you'll be looking to get into well, with maybe Sainsbury's and Asda getting well, involved? Well, the first well? first thing I want to say is is this misnomer of craft beer. Mm. Craft beer is about specialist brewers producing specialist beers, not all of them in my, to my particular taste, but that doesn't mean a thing. But then you get the big guys, you know, yeah. like AB and Bev buying, buying um, Camden, then you've got um, Assange she bought uh, meantime, you know, and, and, and yeah, but Fuller's on a craft beer. Yeah. But 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 what you're seeing is they're all trying to enhance margin because they all know that if they're selling selling a can of national lager, mm. they yeah. have to be price pointed and right. that to sell, and that is the only way that they can do it. And if it's a pound cheaper in Morrison's rather than Asda, they'll be in Morrison's buying it because they have no brand loyalty. But what they're trying to do, and I think Lidl's and Aldi were the first two to really get going with it, was to create their own brand within a brand. Yeah. And that is what has happened. Now, will we be part of that? Look, the canning side of our business will be contract canning. Mm. And we will contract can for anybody. Yeah. And in fact, next year, we've got a contract for a million bottles of kombucha bottling, which will take us take most of the slack out of our business. Yeah. But, but, but the thing I would say to you is this, is that there are brands that are suited to cans. Yeah. And yes, cans is the new generation of, of, of young people's drinking. But my view is that it has to be done well. And if, if craft beer going into a can is not good, it'll be the same as craft beer going into a cask and a keg that is not good. Yeah, yeah. It'll be yeah. exactly the same. But what I am delighted to see, and you know, bear in mind, I'm coming towards the end of my career now. I'm not, um, I'm not still the young chick and racing whippet I once was. But what I would say to you is that where was, what we are beginning to see is a degree of excellence in brewing. Yes. We're beginning yes. to see smaller people taking on the uh, influences of bigger brewers who are all quality driven. And that is what I think is important. I was only saying this last night. I did a review last night in the kitchen of two German box style beers. And I, it was, and I said this to the camera, the videos will be out shortly, but I said to the camera, I've never had a bad German beer. They take their, they take their industry from the small to the, to the very large, they take their industry 
um, so professionally. You know, they, they, but but they have know. the rules, and they exactly, have they have yeah, the rules. Yeah. And you know, three years ago, four years ago, I recommended to Welsh government that we did the same. Yeah, that in totally Wales, different. that we had a, a quality stamp, and and as with so many things in Wales. It took a committee to decide when the committee could meet, and then yeah, that yeah. took six months, and it all got forgotten about. Mm. But here's a simple fact of life. Look at every Evan Evans bottle. On the back of every Evan Evans bottle mm. is a Golden Dragon quality mark. And yeah. that tells anybody who picks that up that, that those beers brewed by us yeah. are brewed to a high quality. Because your, your brewers, um, when I... When, when I Last was at the brewery a few years ago. You had you had uh, a brewer who was who was well qualified in what he was doing. All our all yeah. our all our brewers are graduates. Yeah, of course. Our, yeah, our yeah. young our young um, brewers who we're training on they start with this apprenticeship scheme, and then they go through. But here's here's another thing that's that's so sad about uh, Welsh government again. And I know I'm banging on about the Welsh government, but they should be leading our industry, not not attacking it. Here, in England, we have a fantastic apprenticeship scheme run by the Institute of Brewing and Distilling. Yeah. In Wales, in Wales, they want to run their own. So that's fine. Four years ago it all started, but today we still have no Welsh approved apprentice right. brewer scheme. Yeah. Now here's 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 what we could do. We could copy and paste the IBD yeah. scheme yeah. and have it running within six weeks. The IBD wants to do it, but not Welsh government. Yeah. So yet again, we're disadvantaged by poor lateral thinking. Yeah. It's I, I found that with this whole situation is is um, we're just doing different things. We're just doing different things, and and it's all very confusing. Only now, with the Christmas period coming up, have they all banged their heads together and they're all looking. To but they haven't yet. Yeah. They haven't announced well, yeah. anything well, yet. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and the big problem that we face, as always, is uncertainty. Yes. I cannot say to James, my son, brew 400 barrels during December because we could end up tipping 200 it down. Exactly. And it's that uncertainty that needs really to be addressed. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I would like to say to you that what, we're looking, what we should be looking forward to next year is Christmas coming at Easter. Let's gird our loins and go through the next few months. It's going to be pretty miserable and it's not going to be everything that we know about Christmas. Yeah. But let's start as soon as we get to St. David's Day. Let's, let's start celebrating the great Welsh brewing industry, the great pub industry that we have here in Wales. And most importantly of all, let's get to a position whereby in at Easter next year, we celebrate great beer, great brewing, and great pubs. And it's at our fingertips. We can do it. All we need to do is forget the national brewers yeah. because they will have no interest in... in, in to, all they will do is try and price us out of the marketplace. Yeah. But most importantly of all, Sam, is we have the diversification, we have the geographic distribution, and we have the pubs. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Simon, it's been it's been marvellous, and we've been drinking. Oh, I've really enjoyed this while we've been chatting. Look at the great lacing down that glass. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and, is and this the warrior? No, it's Far Island. It's Far Island Buffalo. Far gluten Island. gluten free. Okay, that's nice that. and hoppy, and at the end of the day, a beer that should be drunk and enjoyed. Lovely. It's re yeah, I've really enjoyed that while we've chatted. Uh, brilliant. Thank you, yeah, you We're not allowed to touch. We have to just do end yeah. to end. Right. Okay. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out evanevansbrewery.com uh, on on the internet. Check out their socials, Instagram and Facebook. Um, I've noticed recently they've they've really upped their game in in you start to post on a daily basis now, and I've really noticed. Oh, we that. we've not been very good at it up until now, but now yeah. we're now we're ahead of the game. Really, really going for it. Yeah, I've noticed. Absolutely. And you know, we've got a lot of stories to tell. There's lots of good beers on there, and there's some very good deals over Christmas. And we're going to be. We must. Uh, preview our great tasting here yeah. in early December which will be live and there will be all sorts of prizes for people to win and, and Absolutely. to lock into. Yeah, this so be great, great stuff. Great stuff. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Thumb the crows.